Richard, for years you have told us with a heat pump that you're installing a lot of these days yeah. that it has the ability to find heat even on the coldest of days. That's right. That's a hard thing to get your head around. In order to understand it, though, we've got to start with a basic understanding of air conditioning. Okay, so this is a little mock-up of how every air conditioning system around the planet works. Mm -hmm. All right, and it works on the most important principle to me in thermodynamics, which is heat always goes to cold. No matter what. So imagine this is the inside unit, the inside, the part that's inside your building has a fan going across it. This is the coil right. you off, yeah. Right, and it's filled with refrigerant. If I can get that really cold, the air, the heat that is in the air on a hot summer day passes by this coil and the pipes inside this are really cold, the heat has no choice but to be absorbed into the refrigerant. Make something cold, put right. it here, heat comes to right. it. And simply put, now that heat that's now trapped inside that refrigerant moves through the piping, through a compressor, to outside, and now this coil is hotter now, and now what happens? The same law happens. If this is really hot inside the refrigerant piping now, and even though the air outside is warm, but, or slightly warm, it's still going to be, this is heat, is going to go to the cooler air. So it's 90 degrees outside. That's right. So long as this is more than 90 degrees, let's call it 120. That's right. It now thinks the 90 is cold. It has no choice. So it's right. going to go to that. Heat goes to cold. So now that dumps out, now this gets a little bit cooler coming back, and now we just have to make that refrigerant really cold, cold, cold again. Okay, so cold here attracts the heat. Hot here dumps the heat. That's right. This is the part that doesn't make any sense. Right. How can you have something that is both colder than the warm inside air, yeah. but then hotter than the hot outside air? The same thing is both things. Well, if I can compress a refrigerant, it has no choice but to get hot, okay? Now, any gas will get hotter if you compress it. This is a perfect example here. This is a little sample unit. Now, this is just filled with air, and you can see there's a little piece of cotton right here. Whoa, whoa, air. So not even refrigerant, just air. It's a gas. So okay. air works the same way. What'll happen is we'll compress that air and get it so hot, we'll get to the flash point that it'll light it up. I don't believe this. Watch this. I don't believe this. See it? You see it? <laughs> Okay. You just lit that on fire All right. with compressed It was in for a nanosecond, but it, was, it helps you understand that if we compress a gas, and it's, it's and, per and directly proportional to the change in pressure, too, it'll get hotter as I compress it more. So that's what this is doing. That's right. Okay, and this wow. has one speed. Now, so, so this so, gets... So that little bit of gas right. that picked up heat from inside, that's you right. make it super hot. Now I could get up to 150 out here. I can get really hot, right? Yeah. But now, I, I dump the heat to outside. Now, how do I get it cold again? Well... Just like when we compress a gas, it gets hot. If we release a gas and get it to a lower pressure, just the opposite. it'll get cold. So that every single air conditioning system has a valve like this called an expansion valve. So here is the high pressure refrigerant right here. Hot. Right. And now it goes to a little tiny needle valve. So the best way to understand that, so this is a can of compressed air, but it's actually in a liquid state inside the can. Because it's and, so compressed. Right. And this oh. needle right here is very similar to the expansion valve. So, you can see right here, I have a digital thermometer. 82 degrees. Okay, so now. Oh, look at it drop. Wow. We've already lost 20 degrees. Mm -hmm. And that's just air. That's just air. Okay. Holy so mackerel, the 40s. you're in the so 40s. Feel, feel the can. That is, un oh yeah. yeah, it's like a block of ice. So with this type of refrigerant, we could get as low as minus 37. Degrees, okay, and so that's what's going on. Right. Where so it's the same process that expansion valve when it releases, it lets it go into larger space and just drops that and makes that coil really, really cold. We pick up the heat inside the building, move the heat through the compressor, dump it to outside. The cycle repeats, it just continues billions and billions of times every hour of the day, worldwide, in every basic air conditioning system. That's sort of how I make a hot day comfortable, right? How do I make a really cold day comfortable? We want to just reverse everything that we got here. Right here, we've got a cold coil here mm. and hot outside. We want it just to be the opposite. We want it to be cold, and we want it to be really cold. So just like you said, even if it's hot outside, so long as this is hotter, the heat's going to move. Correct. Now you're saying that so long as, right. even if it's cold outside, so long as this is colder, right. the heat will move again. If that refrigerant got down to minus 37 and there was zero degree air around it, there's 37 heat, degrees of temperature. Heat would go to cold, to go into that cold refrigerant, okay? Huh. So you pick up heat, the compressor pumps it up, gets it hotter. That coil is now hotter. The cold air that's in the room 
crosses a, what goes across that coil that's hotter. He gets he goes to the cold, goes into the building. Now what do you got to do? You got to go back through a different expansion valve because now we got to get that outside coil again cold. So again. valve is there, just pointed in the a opposite direction. It's a different valve, but it has to go in the opposite direction. Huh. All right. So you could have two separate systems: a heating system moving this way and a cooling system going this way. The way that we can use the same equipment to do both functions is an ingenious device called a reversing valve. Now this sits right here, and the compressor always puts out the hottest refrigerant. So if I look here, it normally would come right here, and it goes right to, in the air conditioning mode, it goes right to the outside coil. Remember, we want it to be hotter outside. Mm. Now, if I switch the thermostat and I say, let's now go to heating of the building, oh. here's the hot refrigerant going right inside the building. It's just right? a simple little gate. That's Absolutely, just moving go. back and forth between air conditioning and heating. Okay? Ah, man, it doesn't look like magic, That's right. but it is. It's just brilliant. It's just absolutely brilliant. This technology is pretty basic, you know, and what the complaint was with heat pumps, you get down to 30, 35 degrees outside and you often have to have electric strip heat or backup heat. Right. And it really was a nature of this level of technology. The compressor was just on at 100 miles an hour and then off. And these fans were on and they were off. And that expansion valve just opened and closed. And so what happens is it would gather a little bit of heat and then it would rest and it would, wouldn't be able to keep up. It was every of, time it rested, it was the just heat as, would leave the house. Right. And so all the modern systems, the inverter style heat pumps, what happens is it has, let, let's take the compressor for example. This compressor now, instead of being on at full blast, this thing has 150 different speeds. Hmm. So it's constantly changing the pressure of the refrigerant, which means it's changing the temperature. So right. if I didn't want really, really hot and I wanted, say, 87 and a half degrees, could I get 87 and a half degrees? Absolutely, precisely that, absolutely. Wow. All right, so now that's on the heating side. We change the compressor speed and spin, okay? The expansion valve, remember the expansion valve? That just was a simple open, closed device. This thing, is a modern expansion valve, and this thing will open and close at 400 different positions in what? 3 eighths of an inch of travel. What? So now you're matching the perfect amount of pressure for the heating side. On the cooling side, you're just changing it just right. So if I didn't want 30 degrees really cold, I right. wanted, say, 47 and a half degrees, Absolutely. I could get just that? Absolutely. Wow. And then also these fans. Now the fans are all ECM fans, which means they're going to spin in concert with the expansion valve and the compressor. So all the fans will also change their speed. ECM is what? Electronically? Electronically con commutated motor. Right. So okay. here, if you look here, the regular fan is, was always on, right? Yeah. But this would be like adding a dimmer to it. So now as you need less, it would wow. just change it. Okay, so an get... ECM motor gives you that control, that Absolutely. variable speed. Right. Here's our reversing valve we yeah. talked about, remember? Yeah. Here's the expansion valve right here. Here's the compressor. And then two lines right here that are going to either send heat into the building or send heat out of the building. And wherever that heat is, it's going to go to cold. You have demystified a very complicated subject. Thank you. If there's I hope a so. fifth or sixth law of thermodynamics, we'd name it after <laughs> you. Nobody could spell it. <laughs> nice job. <laughs> Thanks for watching. This old house has got a video for just about every home improvement project. So be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button. Make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.